Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back to the Ask Leffy podcast. I'm Greg Tubbs, your host, and I got Dan Ferkus yeah, here with uh, me. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to talk about PRV. Yeah, what's that sound? Yeah, what is that sound? We get that question on occasion here in, on the tech support line. We get a guy that calls in, and or even the customer, the homeowner or the building owner, with, hey, your PRV is making noise. What could that be? Yeah, we'll have home, quite a few homeowners that call in, and generally it's after the valve's been installed for, you know, a day or two or maybe a week, and it's making a noise, and, you know, they're waiting for their contractor to get back out and look at it, so in the meantime, that homeowner may call us. Sure. We're going to run this one a little different. We're actually going to kind of play a roll call so you can kind of get the gist of, like, the type of call we get on a day uh, about something like this. Good afternoon, Tech Support. This is Dan. Hi, Dan. This is Jim from Steve's Plumbing. Hey, Jim. How are you doing today? Well, I'd be a lot better if your uh, pressure-reducing valve wasn't rattling pipes and making so much noise. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So um, let's just talk a little bit about your project. You know, What size uh, PRV do you have in? Well, uh, the piping to the house is one inch, so you know, I just put a one-inch valve in. Okay. So you got one inch coming in, one inch going to the home, so... You know, you picked a, a one-inch pressure-reducing valve. Okay. Um, is this a residential or a commercial property? Well, this is definitely residential. Uh, it's a, a three-bedroom house. I think they've got three bathrooms, you know, and a handful of other things running. Uh, just two people live in there. Okay, so only two occupants. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything unique about the home as far as, like, you know, high flow showers or, or anything like that no everything's pretty standard on the shower side of things um, i would say they're probably two gallon a minute showers if if it, if that okay have you have you gone through the home and come up with a design flow rate that you think you need well i really didn't i just went with what i saw for piping there but i suppose we could probably kind of figure that out yeah it'd be important to do that you know kind of total up what what you think you're Shower flow rates are, uh, labs, dishwasher, washing machine, you know, kind of kind of come up with a total GPM. When you look at sizing, that's what's really important. So um, what you did is pretty common. You sized it based on pipe size coming in and through the home. Sure. Um, but not uncommon. Our valves are pretty high flow. So it's not uncommon that you'll see a, a pressure reducing valve that's you know, one or even two pipe diameters so smaller than the incoming piping. Okay, that makes sense. You know, when you look at that um, one-inch pressure-reducing valve, for example, uh -huh. you know, we when we size them, you know, I talked about totaling your total GPM coming into the home, and then what you want to do is take a look at the flow characteristic charts for our pressure-reducing valves. Oh, sure. And then you want to... Take your flow rate and find that in the three to six feet per second window on that flow characteristic chart. Gotcha. Um, that's going to be the velocity where that valve is the happiest. Okay, that makes sense. So you know what's interesting is that you selected the one-inch valve, and that one-inch valve is rated from 10 to 19 gallons per minute in that three to six feet per second window on that flow characteristic chart. And here's what I think you're seeing. You know, 10 gallons per minute is a pretty high flow rate. That valve will perform down to one feet per second. Okay. So when you look at the flow characteristic chart and you get down to one foot per second, that valve will is looking to deliver 3.25 GPM. Okay. So three and a quarter gallon per minute. So you go to a lab sink or you might be one to one and a half GPM. You're never meeting what that valve can handle on a minimum. That makes total sense. So... Um, I think what you'll find is that, you know, going back, evaluating the home, finding out what the typical flow rates are, and then choosing a valve that that will fit that window is what's going to work better. So you may find that the half or even three-quarter might be a better fit there. 
Sure. So this is the typical phone call we get about a noisy PRV or vibrations happening from a PRV. Yeah, if I could count the amount of times I've had this exact conversation in real life, it's it happens a lot. Yeah, so oversizing is usually the biggest trouble. Um, yeah, and- well, and you know what you'll find is that valve is going to be noisy. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of vibration and shuddering and clunking or water hammering sound um, because it's always working at the minimum. Right. So, you know, in a home where you can hear the valve, you're going to notice it. If it's located in a mechanical room or out in the garage or or even outside, in some applications they're outside yeah. or in a basement. You know, you may not or the the homeowner may not hear that sound. So that valve will work okay, but it's going to wear the seat out on that valve. Certainly will. So going through and really looking at the sizing chart, I mean, we have pretty good documentation on how to size a valve properly. Right. So that's that's a, a pretty big deal. Yeah, so that, I mean, number number one most important thing is know your flow rate, know your flow requirement. Absolutely. Not Do not focus on pipe size. Well, and then the same thing can go for undersizing a valve. I mean, on occasion we get that too. We do. Um, you know, too much pressure drop. It's going to cause a lot of screaming of the valve. Yeah, you know? cavitation. Yep. And usually we see that in much larger systems where they're stepping the pressure down way too much too soon too. Right. Yeah, typically you'll want to be within that 2 to 1 pressure ratio, but, you know, never exceeding 3 to 1. Right. Uh, it'll operate at three to one, but it's highly recommended to stick closer to that two to one. What else? I mean, we talk about two stage pressure reduction. That's a, that's another big one. You know, yeah. If you uh, depending on your area, you have you know you can have some really elevated water pressure coming into your buildings, especially a lot of like like mountain areas. You know that when you're working at higher elevations, you tend to build a lot of pressure. Sure. Or if you're working. On a high rise, high rise, you yeah. know they've got booster pumps in there, and you're looking at an incoming of of 150, you know, 90 to 150 psi of pressure. If you're trying to knock it down to 60 psi at 150, that's not quite going to do it. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. you're really pushing that valve. Yeah, it's it's pushing it. Um, that's where you know two stage uh, a two stage installation is going to be a good application. You know, if you have a building that's you know, 150 PSI, and you want to take it down to 50, you know, you might take one PRV, your first PRV, and set it to 90. Right. So you're knocking it from 150 to 90, and then your second one will take it from 90 down to the 50 PSI. Which is perfect. Then you don't have to worry about valve screaming and and wearing things out as fast. Right, right. Quieter application. Certainly. And I think another thing that, you know, is going to cause maybe an undersized condition is a dirty PRV. This thing, this is what gets me the most is we get the phone call. It's either not closing off or the pressure is really reduced. You know, what's going on with this? Is this valve bad? Right. Or it's building pressure. Yeah. Or you have that valve where, you know, you're stepping it from 90 to 50 and then, um, over time, it's creeping back up to maybe 70, 80, or up to that 90 pounds because it's it's continuing to overpressurize. Right. And so then we'll get these back as returns, and we go pull them out of the box. We look right inside of them, and you can see debris, chunks of paint, uh, copper falling. The one we yep. just got back, I've never seen so much magnetite in oh, a PRV. Oh, geez, that one was really bad. Yeah, and then pieces of uh, thread tape in it. Right. So, yeah, chunks of copper, chunks of solder, thread tape, you name it, we found it in debris. And, it, and even the smallest chunk of copper in that in that seat will cause it to overpressurize. Right. It and doesn't take much. It doesn't. And if you look at the ceiling area of that cartridge, it's real fine on the bottom. And you just take one little piece of copper falling in there to, to wedge it. Right. And it, it'll, it'll basically, it'll, it'll mimic a system without a... a an ex- thermal expansion tank. Right. The pressure will slowly build, and 
all of a sudden you're popping relief valves. So. You know, what's nice about ours is that we do have a mesh screen filter on them and it's a 360 degree filter. So, you know, our cartridge goes in on an angle. It has a real big, you know, body to it and it has a screen mesh filter that covers 360 degrees of the opening. So, you know, it, you've got good flow through it and good filtration. Right. But even the tiniest pieces of debris, this isn't a filter. It's not designed no, to be a filter, no. but it's designed to protect the cartridge from larger pieces of debris. Yeah, absolutely. So, but what's nice with ours is that, you know, it talk about maintenance. So, you know, you, you install this on a project, you walk away and then, you know, maybe the municipality comes in and they change something or they flush their hydrants and they knock, create a lot of velocity in the pipes and knock debris shut, or you're in doing service on the water heater and, you know, you're recharging the system and, you know, velocity goes up and you knock some debris loose and now your pressure reducing valve is over pressurizing. Ours, you can easily pull that cartridge out, clean it out, put it back in and, you know, a wrench to break it loose and then you're spinning it out by hand. Right. Yeah. And you pull it apart and you notice that, hey, yeah, there is debris. So you're going to want to wash that thing out and hopefully you have some, a way to wash it off or wipe it out with a rag. But then what we're going to even recommend going further is, all right, if you got that much stuff built up in the body and on the cartridge, maybe what you're going to want to do is, if you can, slide a bucket underneath this thing and open the main up and slowly yeah. and just allow that debris to kind of carry up and out. Right, it's always good to flush, flush it before it. you put it back in yeah. so you don't get more debris in. And it. honestly, if, you, if, if you can make it practice, and not everybody can, you know, every job is different, but if you can make it a, a good solid practice before installing a new PRV, have a bucket handy, purge the main, you know, purge a few gallons off. You might be surprised how much debris comes out of it. Right, yeah, that debris is there. So if you can purge it off, you know it's not going to get stuck in that valve. Right, then you'd go through with an, installing your valve, you know, whether it's press, NPT, or sweat, and make the install and then pressurize the system and, and just go through and check it all out again. Right, yeah, we do have, you know, all of our valves are union connection. So we do have, you know, jumper nipples that you can put in there. Um, if you wanted to sweat it in place, put it in place, put a jumper nipple in, flush that main, purge it off real well, or even during construction, put that jumper nipple in until you know the system's been flushed and clean and then pull it out and then install the body. Right, yeah. So I think what we could take away from this, I think the biggest nugget of information, take time and find out, Figure out what the GPM demand is for each application. That's really going to save you a lot of headaches. That's what's really important. Know, know your system requirements and then select the valve that's going to fit that. So tune in next week for Episode 9, and I think we're going to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk about troubleshooting your zone relay box. That sounds good. That's I, a big topic. I'm looking forward topic. to that. Yeah, I mean, you might even get a little bit of education on how to use your tools a little better. Yeah. So, well, we'll look forward to that. We'll talk. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.